Welcome. I'm Al Craney, forester with the Skagit Conservation District, and we're at a forest land here in Skagit County, Washington. And this particular forest land owner is looking at a variety of products that he may want to produce from his forest land. And uh, beyond just timber, we're looking at other products. And today we're going to talk about the generation of uh, maple syrup and how we how we go about doing that. And this particular tree, in a moment, we'll kind of demonstrate on it. This is a 20-year-old big leaf maple, Acer macrophyllum, and uh, it actually produces some very fine maple syrup. But part of the process involves the, collect, the per correct uh, processing and collecting of the sap. So we're going to be talking about that along with uh, some of the landowner's objectives here as we look at various uh, minor forest products. Here in Skagit County, we have 165 different soil types. And that is really important in picking sites that are good for big leaf maple and where they grow best and where you get the best sap production. So those particular sites that we're looking at are sites where, that favor the growth of big leaf maple. And here in Skagit County, uh, elevation wise, it only exists up to about 1500 feet in elevation. Um, so we need to consider our sites, even though big leaf maple will grow on a variety of sites from, from quite wet to quite dry, we need ideal uh, uh, soils for uh, syrup production. My name is Neil. I've been tapping big leaf maples for two years now. And I'm going to give a demonstration on tapping trees. Generally, you start tapping the maple trees in November and your season lasts on and off until March. You do the best when a cold night, warm days, after a snow and in the melt off, the sap will really start flowing. But uh, we'll tap this one. We're not going to get any sap because we're late in the season, but uh, just giving a demonstration. I've got a 5 16th drill, and I'm using uh, um, a special type of tap with a check valve in it, which helps stop bacteria from entering the tree um, when there's no sap flows. So here we go. Okay, and I'm going about an inch and a half to two inches. And I've got a harness already made out. I'm going to try tapping these three trees. So our first one is right here. Where did that? Just tapped in so it's firm. I go over to my next one. You want to give it a little bit of drop on each one. Now, if the sap is really running, as you drill, you're going to see the, tra the sap just dripping out of your tree. Um, you can get up to, up to five gallons uh, overnight. Um, a good tree will put out each one. I should be getting a gallon from each tree once this, if the sap is really flowing. You know, I'd be all tapped in, uh, plug into my bucket. Now I'd be ready for, um, for the sap. To, uh, the next day I'd come along, empty my buckets, um, take them up to a boiling point. The holes I'm drilling in the trees, they're going to heal over. Once I pull my taps in the spring, by fall, 
Well, it'll be um, a little plug of bark over it, so I'm not hurting the trees. Um, okay, we're up cooking off some sap. I've got a 25 gallon stainless uh, um, pot that I cook out of. I've got it on a uh, um, cooking over fire on this one. I built a, a steel liner. Uh, I've got fire bricks inside and out to hold my heat in. And I'll cook it, put my sap in, I'll start it in this one and I'll reduce it down to probably about 30% sugar content, which I'll be checking on my refractometer, which is a, a scale that measures the content of sugar in anything you want. Um, once I get her down to say 30%, I'll drain it off here through a strainer to catch anything um, that is in the sap, anything big. Then I run it into, I'll put it into my other cooker, which I'm cooking over propane. Now propane is more expensive to cook with, but you can control your heat so much more. A hobbyist is probably going to use propane just because it's easy to do. Um, you get a crab cooker, put it under a 10 gallon pot, and you're ready, you're in business. I'll cook it in, I'll cook my sap down in this kind of one, down to probably in the 50% sugar range. And from there, I'll take it into the kitchen and finish it. Um, you're, you're shooting for 64% sugar content. Once I get to there, then I run it through a, a filter system and we'll look at that once we go to the kitchen. Okay, we're in the kitchen and uh, now we've reduced our sap down to syrup consistency, which is 64% sugar content. Now, I would be testing it on my refractometer where you'd um, zero it out with a drop of water and then you put a drop of the syrup on, hit your button, and it gives you a precise reading exactly what your sugar content is. I'm taking it off uh, my stove at probably about 63% because you still have a little evaporation going and you don't want to you don't want to go too far over 64%. Once I've got it into syrup I'm going to be filtering it. This is a Orlon Sac filter system and this is great for a hobbyist where you're doing small amounts, maybe you're doing a half a gallon of syrup. If you're, if you're doing more than half a gallon, uh, um, you're, this is really slow, so you, you're probably going to something more like this one. And this is a filtering bottling system. You got your temperature gauge, so when you're bottling, you know you're keeping your temperatures up around 180 degrees. To, um, and the way this one works, is you'd put in an Orlon filter first. This is your primary filter. It would fit down into your pan. And then you put pre-filters. You can buy all this online. Uh, um, the pre-filter is very cheap. The Orlon's a little bit more expensive. And you'd put layers, uh, depending on how much uh, syrup you're running through, is how many layers of pre-filters you put on. As you pour your syrup through, you're gonna get a buildup of um, sugar sands, which are minerals that are naturally in the sap. And as, you're, as it builds up, you just slide one filter out and then it just keeps on going through. Great system. If you're, if you're also, if you just have like a half a gallon, um, a quick way I've found of doing it is I take a strainer and I'll put uh, just a couple of uh, um, layers of the pre-filters and I'll form it into a bowl and you can just pour right through it. A half gallon is it's a great way to do it. Much faster as it builds up you just slide your uh, pre-filters out and you have it over a big kettle. Great way to do a small amount. Um, I would recommend the pre-filters over the Orlon sack. This will uh, far more time consuming. Once I've got it, uh, um, I've filtered it all through, I just start bottling and uh, that would be a finished product uh, of syrup. Hi, I'm Kevin Zobrist, Washington State University Extension Forestry Specialist here in Skagit County. Here we have some finished syrup that Neil has made. Syrup is graded based on color and this kind of shows a gradient of color from a light amber to a medium amber all the way down to a dark amber. And depending on the time of year and also how fast you boil off the water, that's going to impact your uh, color of the syrup. Now comes the best part, which is the taste test. I'm going to start 
here with a couple of the medium ambers. And that is delicious. It's got a, just a really rich, very mapley flavor. This one is slightly darker, so I'm going to try it. Very similar, but just a little bit more intense. And now I'm going to try the really dark amber. Mm, that is just exquisite. It has hints of uh, vanilla in it. Very uh, unique flavor. Just excellent. Now you can make other products out of maple sap other than syrup. Syrup, the sugar is concentrated to 64%, but if you boil it down to right around 10% sugar, very close to what commercial soda pop uh, concentration is, you get an excellent cream soda. Add a little bit of carbonation and this will be the best cream soda you've ever had.